Hello, hello, and welcome to A Dark Elf's Guide to Domination. As per our previous guides, we're going to be taking a look at the Dark Elf roster, the lords and heroes it has, the units it has, and what role they serve in the army, and what I think you should take in Domination. As you may have guessed, this video will be mostly concerning Domination mode, though it can help you in land battles or campaign as well. So, let's get right into it. For talking lords, the best one hands down at the moment is the Witch King himself, Malekith. Specifically on his dragon, he is an absolute terror. Between his breath attacks and gaze of malice, he's very, very good at clearing infantry, and his soul stealer castings punishes blobs, as well as gives good healing to let him continue his rampage in melee with his dragon. The typical way you play him is you fly around, you cast your abilities, you use your breath attacks, then you look to rear charge and tear out enemy infantry units or anything else that can be terror routed, snipe enemy single entities, casters, you know, things like Bastilladons or, you know, any weaker single entities. And then if your opponent tries to punish you with cavalry or monstrous infantry or anything like that, you drop a fat soul stealer, heal up, and do a ton of damage to them. It's a very, very strong playstyle. Now, if Malekith isn't suitable to, to your needs for whatever reason, the next choice is usually Malice Darkblade. He is incredibly tanky, especially when taken with the Warp Sword of Cain on his uh, Cold One Spite. He's very, very disruptive. He's very hard to kill. So what you can do with this guy is usually he just kind of sends it to the enemy backline, gets on top of whatever high priority missile unit they have, whether it be, you know, Skaven Gisales or Cathay Cannons, whatever. And he's just very, very difficult to remove with his excellent healing. He doesn't have a massive HP pool compared to Malekith, but when you factor in the fact that when he gets low HP, he transforms into this Arcan, which you have to do manually, by the way. He doesn't automatically do that. Please don't think he automatically does that. Um, he transforms into Zarkan, getting a full new HP bar. Granted, he will take damage over time, but he does have enough healing effects to counteract that. And then, once he's in Zarkan form, he can serve as a pseudo mortis engine with his active ability doing large amounts of damage in the area around him. So, he's another very, very strong choice, almost always going to be paired with a sorceress, so that way you also have a caster. If neither of those two are suitable, the next best lord, in my opinion, is the Supreme Sorceress. Typically, just taken as a cheap caster lord. With something like, you know, maybe just Pit of Shades or Burning Head, maybe Soul Spirit Leech and Fate of Buna as well. Something like that, that sort of kit, just to be taken as a cheap caster. The other lords aren't typically that great, the exception being Marathi. Some people like Marathi. I'm not a huge fan personally. Um, typically, she plays just like a worse Malekith. She's a lot squishier. Her melee stats aren't as good. Um, she's a bit of a stronger caster. Um, what used to make her so good was. The combination of Heart Render and the Dark Sword with minus five, minus five melee of attack defense aura, as well as Enchanting Beauty, which used to give a much larger melee attack debuff, but now it's only five. So with only minus ten melee attack, she's okay, but generally Malekith is going to serve you better in that role. So yeah, those are the lords that you take: is Malekith, Malice, and the Sorceress. As for heroes, again, the most common one you'll see is the Sorceress usually paired with Malice to give you a caster option. Other than that, sometimes you'll see a Master, as they are very cheap anti-large duelists. You typically take them stripped down on just a Dark Steed, so they can go fight anything large. They can fight characters, monsters, cavalry, monsters, infantry, whatever. They're a very cheap duelist character and can be quite disruptive, in the same way Vayne Malice can, although they're a much cheaper option. Don't see a lot of Death Hags, as they don't have a whole lot of great abilities or use, and they're still fairly expensive. At 600 base value for mediocre stats. Yeah, I mean, the stats are fine, but anti infantry isn't that great for dueling. So. And assassins just aren't that good in domination, as they're generally perceived as being. I mean, they're assassins, they're good at killing characters, so. That aspect isn't as prominent in domination as it was in land battles, so you don't see them a whole lot anymore these days. On to the units proper. So, for starters, we have dread swords and. dread spears and bleak swords. I get that mixed up all the time. They're your typical, you know, spear unit and sword unit, respectively. They're lower tier, but compared to most other lower tier infantry, clan rats, empire state troops, marauders, they are actually quite well statted. Though they do uh, pay for that in uh, lower health pools, as which is typical of the elves. They do have silver shields, which makes them quite resilient, mi resilient against missile fire, which can be a large boon, seeing as most of your missiles are typically going to be outranged by enemy missiles. Um... As for which one you should take, these are usually going to be the backbone of your front line. You know, if you're worried about large, you take spears. If you're worried about infantry, you take bleak swords. Pretty straight, straightforward. ROR is just a tankier version of a spear with poison to keep it alive even longer and expert charge defense to allow to survive charges even from infantry and help tankier melee stats. 
it's a fine unit. If you need something to hold a point by yourself, it's fine, but it's not exceptional. It's not a must pick. Black Arc Corsairs. If you need a more aggressive infantry option, these are your go-to. They, you take them in most builds. They're very, very strong. They just clear infantry very quickly, especially light armored infantry. They trade very well with their armor and bonus for the infantry. They're just an absolute lawnmower in the front line. They can do quite well for you if you're going for a more aggressive style or even to come in and clean up after you've kited your opponent. Witch Elves serve a similar role to Black Arc Corsairs, but they're quite a bit squishier, lacking armor entirely. They do have a bit of fizz resist, but generally they're just a lot squishier than the Black Arc Corsairs. Although their damage output is respectable, the only real reason you would ever take these guys is for this effect, the Madness of Cain, which can rampage enemy units, forcing them out of position, and can often be used to snipe characters or monsters, but that's a little bit of a niche application as they are slow and can't apply that effect wherever they want. Sister Sing and Doom are a bit interesting. Um, they cause terror, that's their big gimmick, which is fine, but typically you're going to have either Malekith for a terror option or cheaper terror options in Manticores, which we'll get to later. So generally they are overshadowed. They're a fine unit in melee, but typically they're overshadowed by the cheaper, more cost-effective Black Arc Corsairs or the terror sources we just mentioned. Sister Slaughter, again, they're expensive melee unit. Expensive melee units always suffer from being excellent targets for things like missiles, cav charges, spells, and having low armor makes them very exploitable by all three of those. So they're a bit of a risky pick, though they can do well into some other elite infantry with their excellent melee defense. Harganath Executioners are your cheapest AP option in melee, which is really sad. <laughs> For 1200, they're quite good in melee. Um, they're really good meat grinders, they chew through armor infantry very quickly. But they have, suffer the same problems as the Slaughter do, where they're an excellent target for AP missiles, spells, or cav charges. So they're quite exploitable, and they're only really a consideration when you're going up against something like Dwarves or, I don't know, Cathay, where you need to chew through a lot of armor quite quickly. Blackguard are in the same boat. They suffer from being victims of spells, AP missiles, all that. But they are a very strong elite halberd unit, and can absolutely tear down any cav or monsters that get caught in them. Though, typically, they're just going to end up being hit with spells, unfortunately. Which sucks, they're a cool unit. You'll never guess what I have to say about the Blades of the Blood Queen. They're very vulnerable. Spells, missiles, yada yada. Their stats are excellent, but it's hard to keep them alive through those things. On to missiles. Dark Shard is actually quite a powerhouse. They have excellent uh, missile strength for their price point, as well as AP. And if you could explore for the 600 cost version, they have Silver Shields as well is very very good for trading in enemy missile pieces their one big weakness is that they do a short range so they kind of have a little bit of trouble and if you try to trade in enemy missile pieces you'll often find yourself pushing very aggressively on the map to get in range which can be a bit problematic though if they are allowed to just sit and shoot they can do quite a good bit of damage to basically any target thanks to their ap values they'll chew through monsters they'll chew through infantry they'll chew through anything blacker corsairs are mostly useful as a kite unit they have 360 fire rate and fire angle and good missile strength as well as decent combat stats and armor so they're very, they are a very self-sufficient missile unit so they're very strong when you want to go for a more kite oriented style and just want to keep your opponent at bay and want to be able to have your missile units survive things like dogs or light cav jumping on them bolt fiends Bolt Fiend's main gimmick is Shield Breaker, which is very, very strong when paired with other Dark Shards Focus Fire to chew through Silver Shielded Armored Infantry very quickly. I like to take them a lot into a lot of the Chaos mashups where I'm expecting Chaos Warriors so I can chew through that Silver Shielded um, Armored Infantry. Shades. Stocked AP Missile Unit. These guys, they're marketed as being a self-sufficient missile unit, more of a hybrid unit with good melee stats, but they're super squishy. They have a low HP pool, low armor, reasonable melee defense, but they tend to just die to cav very, very easily. Even the better, you know, the higher tier variants with better melee stats, they just die to cav exceptionally easily. So they're pretty niche pick. You can use them against things like dwarves where they're, or coast where there isn't going to be much cavalry. And, they, and then they're pretty effective at just, you know, popping out of stealth, firing a heavy hitting AP volley, and then fading away into the shadows again, which is a style they're very good at, but if there's any kind of cavalry on the field, they will have a very hard time. So you want to make sure you are able to protect them. But if you're trying to protect units, it's usually just bring dark shards because they do have better damage output for the price. On to cavalry. Dark riders are your general all-purpose, just cheap mobility option. 
They provide you battlefield control as well as a source of mass, so you're generally going to want to bring at least three or four in every build. Typically, you take the shielded version as it gives you a good deal of melee defense for only 50 gold, and obviously a shield can be helpful in the right scenario as well. They're quite strong. They're nothing special, though. You just want them for their cheap mobility and mass, as I said. Cold One Knights. Cold One Knights specialize in killing enemy armor, specifically large armor. Cav, monsters, monster infantry, they'll tear it all down very effectively. They're very good in that role. What they're not good at is killing infantry in any way, shape, or form. They rely on their anti-large bonus to have decent melee attack. Their base melee attack is very, very low. So they really only want to be trading in armor. Um, that said, they're also very good at killing things like monsters and chariots. So I typically bring one of these guys in just about every one of my builds. And I'll bring a couple more against cat factions with a lot of heavy calf. Bretonia, Empire, Kislev, things like that. Doomfire Warlocks <clears throat> suffer from the same problem a lot of units with bell bound spells do. In that their spells just aren't very good. Soul Blight's okay. Lesser Doom Bolt's okay. But for 1200 with the stats you're getting, it's just not enough. Their Fizz Resist is nice, but Fizz Resist just ain't what it used to be. There's so many things with magical attacks these days that it, they're just pretty underwhelming. So for the price and for such a small HP pool as well, they're very squishy. So you're generally better off passing on them. Dread Knights, they have a really respectable stat line, but they have the same problem that a lot of other elite units do, which is that they can be focused down quite easily and killed. And with low speed, they're often going to be outmaneuvered by faster cav and going to be forced into poor engagements. Things like, you know, Hellstrider is the obvious choice. They can just get around you faster. They can rear charge you and just force you into bad engagements and drag you down very easily. So generally, they're a bit too much of the price. And if you want an AP cav, Cold One Knights tend to do just fine. Slash's Harvesters, they have better spells, but... Not that much better. Word of Pain is fine. Soul Sealer is good. But, I don't know, Soul, this unit used to be really good in Warmer 2 land battles for punishing SEM blobs, which are very, very common. And very, very strong in land battles. In Domination, that's less of an aspect, so the Soul Sealer isn't as valuable. And you're paying a lot just for basically one Soul Sealer, so. I mean, stats are decent, but for 1450, you kind of expect a bit more. Knights of the Ebon Claw... In Warhammer 2, their whole shtick was that they were a Dread Knight that didn't Rampage. With the Primal Instinct changes coming in Warhammer 3, that's not even a factor anymore. So they're just Dread Knights with Murderous Mastery and better stats. So if you don't want Dread Knights in the first place most of the time, you're never going to want these guys. Alright, Missile Cavalry and Chariots. This is what Dark Elves are known for. This is where a lot of their power comes from. Dark Rider Peers are an excellent mounted mounted missile unit. They play a little different than most skirmish cav, seeing as they don't have a 360 degree fire rate. They play more like a mobile missile unit, where you just can reposition quickly and get off what is a very considerable amount of damage for a skirmish cav unit. As loyal as being AP, they're an excellent summon in the late game, or in the early game if you're going for a more kite oriented style, but in the late game they're very good for just getting some AP damage on the field quickly, as most of your melee units are not actually AP. Infantry have to go for our executions to get AP, and Cold One Knights are 1,000 to get decent AP. So for 650, they get you some fast AP. They're very, very solid. They'll kill pretty much anything if you get good shots with it and keep them alive, though they are a bit micro-intensive. The Raven's Heralds. They're the repeater crossbow ROR, but they function very differently. First of all, they're flying, and they have a much fewer models, so they play very differently. What they're very good at is sniping squishy characters, just flying right over top so that they're shooting almost straight down, makes them incredibly accurate, and they can bring that 50 missile strength to bear against those you know, SEMs. The problem is that Dark Elves don't have a very strong air force, so they have a hard time keeping them safe to let them do that job. And they're very, very squishy, so if you don't keep them safe, they're not going to last very long. So typically you're not able to actually use them effectively because they're just going to get either chased down by Furies or shot out of the sky. All right, Scourge Runners. This is probably the most notorious unit on this roster. Love them or hate them, they are insanely strong. They're a decent melee chariot, but what makes them very, very strong is this missile attack right here. A heavy AP and bonus versus large means they zone out all the things that typically counter a chariot. Chariot's typical counters are mass units, monster's infantry, cavalry, that sort of thing. They excel at shooting those things, which means that those cavalry and monster infantry have to fall back behind the enemy's formation in order to not get shot, which allow the chariots to just start running over your enemy's infantry. 
It's a very, very powerful one-two combo, and we'll show it in action a little bit later, because it's very, very strong, and it's a core te it's a core aspect of how Dark Elves play. These units are going to be used in pretty much every match where you can get away with them, as they are they are pre they pretty much carry the Dark Elves in most matchups. They're exceptionally strong, and can make a lot of matchups pretty much unplayable for your opponent. Okay, Cold One Chariots. After all the good things I just said about Scourge Runner Chariots, these guys are just more expensive, and they do nothing exceptionally well that Scourge Runners don't do. Like, they have a little extra armor. They're slower. They're not anti-large. Like, they're fine, but why would you take them when you use Scourge Runners? So, the Ravagers of Rakarth. They're pretty expensive for an ROR, being 250 extra. When you're spamming Scourge Runners, you typically, you know, you're already spending a lot of money, you don't want to spend a lot more, but the poison can be nice, as well as the barbnet to keep things off of you, but you're so fast, there's not a lot of things that can catch you anyway, and most of those things that can are going to be taking a hefty toll from your anti-large AP missiles anyway, so typically don't need those guys. Monsters and Beast. Okay, if you're if you're just coming in this game in Warhammer 3, if you didn't play Warhammer 2, you probably think these guys function a lot like Furies. You know, they can go in, tear apart missile units, Get good value, maybe it's care part skirmish cav or light cav. You know, things Furies do. You'd be wrong. These guys are terrible. They have low leadership, they take damage very, very quickly, they don't do a lot of damage themselves. They're just a shitty Fury. Like imagine Furies if they didn't deal damage and you have harpies, and they routed much faster. They're just not very good. They get shredded by by Furies, and I think bats too, so they typically lose the fight for the air. They're just not a very good unit in general. So I would typically skip out on these guys. That said, the Regiment of Renown, I take in every build. This ability right here, Crow Feast, gives them healing and melee, which makes them much, much stickier and able to win a lot of fights they wouldn't otherwise be able to. Like I said, a Harpy loses one-on-one -on -one to a Fury. A Cro Crows of Cain can kill a Fury and then kill a second Fury, back to back. They're much, much stronger. They win a lot of fights the basic ones don't. I take them in in literally every matchup my reinforcements they're a really good reinforcement tool they're the only real thing you have to contest the air for the airspace so they're just pretty much essential to the dark elves in my opinion manticores these guys need no introduction they've been a staple of multiplayer for years at this point they're really cheap terror they're really good at killing single entities they hit very reliably they're good animations like what's not the love about these guys they're cheap they kill things good Typically, they're used to kill, like I said, single entities that can disrupt missile units, and they can tear out really well. That's their typical uses. I wouldn't try to use them to kill artillery, as they used to be decent for that job, but with the move to ultra size, they have to kill four models now to actually shut down their artillery, and it takes them a good deal longer to do that. So they're not as effective as that job as they used to be. I would stick to using them either as a terror source or to goon out casters. Kribus is a little janky. Um, its animations are a little awkward. So it doesn't connect very reliably. And you just don't really need the anti-large duelist role. Um, you already have Malekith on a dragon or Malice on a horse, as well as cheap masters that are anti-large. So you don't really need this big lumbering target of an anti-large duelist that probably can't even catch whatever it wants to fight. It just doesn't really have a place in this roster, as well as being a little overpriced for what it does. So generally you want to skip out on these guys. War Hydras... They also suffer from suffer from the same problem Charybdis does, where they have janky animations and don't connect very well, so they don't do a whole lot of damage in melee. They also have breath attack that the damage is okay, um, but the thing that makes the thing that makes breath attack strong on dragons is that they can fly around and get the perfect angle for it pretty much every time in the hands of a skilled player. These guys can't fly and they're not particularly fast, so they have a hard time lining up those perfect breath attacks so they can't really get a whole lot of value out of that, as well as they have a harder time disengaging from melee to actually get out and fire the breath attacks, because they can't be fired while in melee. So these guys tend to not pay for themselves or really accomplish a whole lot. Black dragons, they're not bad, but if you can bring up if you can bring up a black dragon safely, then you can bring Malekith, and Malekith is always better than a black dragon. And you don't need to. So, like, it's it's a fine unit, Malkith is better. 10 times out of 10. Um, Chill of Sontar. It has Frostbite. Woo. The enemy can't get away from you, but your janky animations mean you're still not going to hit it. 
It still suffers from all the same problems the other Hydra does. Bloodrack Medusa, Missile Monsters and Beast, as well as the ROR. Um, they're okay. They're fairly squishy and they're Missile Monster. Their blast radius is on their missiles is pretty small, so they tend to overkill models and waste a lot of their damage. So unless the enemy is really, really clumped up, you have a hard time really dealing damage. Their range isn't very high. They're not super fast. They're hard to keep alive. And you just have better options to do what they do. Namely, Dark Rider Peters and Scourge Run. Well, Scourge are shoot large, but Dark Rider Peters shoot infantry just fine. And you have, you know, Malekith to use breath attacks to clear infantry or Gaze of Malice. So they just don't really serve a role. Or, well, the role is already filled, so you don't really need these guys. The ROR just gives Whale of Malice, which is a pseudo mortis engine, which is odd for a missile monster that wants to be shooting to have an ability that's only useful in melee. Hmm. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. All right, last but not least, artillery and war machines. Reaper bolt throwers are excellent. They have very, very small models. They're very tiny artillery pieces, and they're fairly accurate, which makes them really, really good for dueling enemy artillery pieces. Things like cannons, catapults, fire rain rockets, plague claw catapults, whatever. They're very, very good for dueling those pieces, which really enables a lot of the Dark Elf playstyle. If you can get rid of enemy cannons, they can't shoot your Scourge Runners and can't force you to come into melee with them. Which is very, very strong. They're, not also, they're also not bad at shooting single entities or chariots or cavalry with their anti-large missiles. I would tend to avoid the multi-shot round. They have the toggleable missile type. The anti-infantry version doesn't do a lot of damage. You typically want these to be shooting large targets or artillery. They're going to be pretty much wasted shooting infantry, even with the multi-shot. Last but not least, the Bloodrack Shrine. So, these guys are bugged at the moment. So the Bloodrack Shrine, if you haven't seen it in game, it has the Bloodrack Medusa on top of this War Shrine. It also has two little Witch Elves on it. The Witch Elves are supposed to throw javelins. Currently, they are bugged, and they throw the same projectile that the Bloodrack Medusa does, resulting in triple the damage output that this thing is supposed to have. You might think that sounds like incredibly OP. Like, why doesn't everybody use it? Well, this unit, if it weren't for the bug, would be absolute garbage. <laughs> the damage output on paper isn't very high. With the bug, they can do a good job chunking through infantry. That said, they do tend to spend their ammo in about a minute or two, so they're not going to be on the battlefield for very long, which means that, well, you have the choice to make of do you keep them on the battlefield to use to make use of the buffs they provide, as well as the terror source, or do you de-summon them to get a refund and get more ammo? So they're they're okay, they're short-ranged, and they kill infantry. And with between, again, you have better options between chariots and blacker corsairs and Malekith, you generally have better options to kill infantry. But if you need an extreme measure, these things are fine at that job. Until the bug gets fixed anyway. So let's talk about typical build styles. So there's two styles that Dark Elves typically play. The first one, and the most by far the most common one, is a kite style, revolving around Scourge Runner Chariots. So you're just going to take Malekith, again with this typical kit, something like this. You're going to take three or four Scourge Runner Chariots. Um... Yeah, this is the core of a vast majority of Dark Elf builds. This right here. Sometimes you take a fourth, sometimes you only take two, but three is usually a solid middle ground. If you want to go full kite, then you fill that out with Black or Corsair Handbows and Dark Rider Repeaters, and now you have no melee units for your enemy to engage on, and you can just keep running away and shooting. This is effective against things like Vampire Counts with a very, very slow front line, or Nurgle. You can also go for a more melee mix-up where you have Scourge Runners and then a bit of more aggressive melee infantry. So you can use the Scourge Runners to, again, zone out those large targets and let your Black Corsairs and Bleak Swords really get in and kill their infantry along with your Scourge Runners, which are also quite good at that job. This is a little more standoffish where you want to kind of wait till the right engagement, but this is a bit of a hybrid build. The other option you can go for, and you can do this with pretty much any Lord, the Lord is kind of interchangeable in this kind of strategy, is just a more standard missile build where you take, you know, a front line of infantry, backed up by some dark shards, with, you know, cav and the reinforcements to peel them off. And you just do a more standard missile build, maybe some bolt throwers shoot enemy artillery, and you force the enemy to come into you, and you shoot them pieces while peeling your missile units. Let's see what that looks like. I have a couple of replays prepared, so we can see those styles in action. So, first we'll see the kite style versus vampire counts.
So as I was saying, the whole goal of this kind of build is to avoid letting your opponent engage you in melee. This is very effective against factions like Vampire Counts, Nurgle, Corn, things that are going to absolutely roll you in melee. So, if this thing will load up real quickly. Special thanks to my clanmate Drakens for helping me get some good replays to show this off to you guys. Appreciate the help, Drakens. So the general style of, of kite is you're gonna to wanna to push up to your opponent's lines, start shooting, and then just slowly back off and back off and keep shooting all the while. That's the typical kite style. Dark Elves add a little bit of a unique spin on this, like I mentioned with the Surge Runner Chariots a bit earlier, where they're gonna push up and yeah, take a little bit of push up. They're gonna start shooting at these Cryptors. So if you know how Chariots play, Chariots are really, really good at running over things like infantry. Anything small, they can just run over and do a ton of damage but they do almost nothing to large units like Crypt Horrors in melee. So the Crypt Horrors are the only thing stopping the Chariots from actually just running over all of this free, free infantry. But because of our anti-large shooting, we can push up and we zone out the Crypt Horrors. The Crypt Horrors have to hide way back here to avoid getting shot, as will Manfred in a moment, which means that, you know, well, first of all, Malekith can come up and get some spells off, but now the Crypt Horrors are forced to stay all the way back here, which means the Scourge Runners can come up in melee and just start running over zombies and skeletons and if he starts bringing the Crypt Horrors up, I'll start. I'll just back off and shoot them. Either way, the Scourge Runners are accruing a ton of value, and the Counts aren't very happy. In addition to that, we have, you know, like I said, our other units are just pushing up as far as they can. We want to start shooting as far forward as we can. That way we have as much space to kite back as possible, so we can just shoot all the while. They have to push forward to avoid shooting us. If they just sit here, we're going to shoot them. If they chase us, we're going to run away and shoot them. So they have to push us all the way back to the end of the map to actually catch us. Or they have to push forward to take the, the objectives to actually force us into melee eventually by putting us on a timer via objective points. Now Malak is just flying around doing his thing, whiffing breath attacks. Generally you want to wait until they're engaged in melee to use breath attacks, but I got a little happy-go-lucky here. Scourge Riders are just running through infantry, and yeah, the infantry just can't really do anything without large units to protect it, and if the large units come through, we're just going to start shooting them again. So we just back off and we give space and we give space and we shoot and we shoot and we spend as much ammo as possible. And then once we're content, we spent enough ammo, the enemy forces are weak, or we're, we run out of ammo, we start de-summoning our missile units, and we start summoning in melee units eventually. And we will start eventually to uh, to take the melee engagement. For the time being, though, counts are going to take this objective, and we're just going to sit around and shoot them. We're content to let them have this objective for quite a long time. We're going to shoot, we're going to shoot, find our priority targets. I did make the mistake here, wasting a lot of ammo on just chaff, on skeletons, on zombies. You really want to be prioritizing things like you know, the elite units, the more expensive ones, Crypt Horrors, maybe the Sternsman, maybe Manfred, whatever's big and expensive. Firing at Chaff is generally not an efficient use of your ammo, which is a bit of a mistake I made here. But now the Chariots, again, the, the Crypt Horrors are occupied, so the Chariots can just run through the infantry. The cav comes in, they pull, they pull away, our Cav comes in, they intercept, and our Chariots can go right back to either running through infantry or shooting. And that's basically the gist of Kite Style. You just, you know, you... You push up, you poke, you run, you keep running away, and they have to chase you to actually stop you from just keep poking them. Then you bring in Cav to actually catch any fast units they have, whether it be Cavalry or Dogs or Flyers. You bring in Cavalry of your own, Dark Riders or Cold One Knights. Usually Dark Riders are the cheaper option to catch things. And you just have them catch them. They don't need to kill them because you have the missile units to do that. So you have your missile units back off, turn and shoot the Black Knights. And see these Black Knights, they're technically in melee with our chariots. They're taking a lot of damage just getting shot by our Dark Riders and our... Uh, Sure, we're in our chariots. And yeah, that's the gist of it. That's the basics of that style. So let's check out the other version. So this is a more standard missile line style. We just have you know pike and shot. You have your spears. You have your crossbows. And you can do good damage. If you're against a faction with good artillery, you may want to bring some bolt throwers to actually poke out that artillery so they can't just shoot you to pieces. But if you're against a chaos faction that doesn't have as good artillery, uh, then you can just rely on your dark shards to do good work. You can do this kind of style against other missile factions to reasonably, reasonably effectively as well, thanks to all your silver shields. But you do have a little bit of problem being outranged pretty heavily, so you have to push fairly aggressively to actually get your dark shards to fire.
so if Kairos will load in, again, thank you Drakens for helping with this. All of my replays got, you know, with the patch they all got corrupted, so I had to record a whole, record a whole new set. So I really appreciate that. But yeah, this is the general style. You have your spears up front, your crossbows in the back, and then you have infantry on the sides to protect the flanks. And yeah, we'll do the typical thing that most missile factions do. We push up, we put one edge of our formation on an objective, with our bows threatening the other objective. Malekith gets a little ham here, but he's just perfectly tanky, so he will survive this, although it was a bit of a mistake. You just want to keep him a little bit closer until things get engaged. And there's poking. Zinch is doing Zinch things. We're waiting. We're perfectly content to sit here, despite being shot, because we have our toes on two objectives, and we have this missile line that is basically waiting for our opponent to come into us. You can also use bolt throwers to try and coax your opponent to come to you a little bit sooner by applying pressure with range damage, but it's also just fine to sit here with the objectives and use those as your, as your source of pressure. Because, you know, if you're holding two objectives, sooner or later your opponent will have to come fight you, and then they get torn apart by your dark shards. Because our opponent does have heavy, heavily armored and shielded infantry with their silver shields, we have included the bolt fiends, and once they come in, you will see we'll be focus firing whatever target they are firing on. Ow, blue fire hurts, if you haven't noticed. Um, yeah, but yeah, we're perfectly, perfectly content to sit here and just keep summoning an infantry to thicken our lines. Once they start aggressing on us more thoroughly, we will summon in cavalry to protect our flanks. Both Dark Rider repeaters, Dark Riders, and Cold One Knights. Yep, now the fight begins, and like I said, the Bolt Fiends have picked a target, namely this Chaos Warrior right here. So we're focusing firing them with this one, and this Dark Shard as well, and they will die off very, very quickly. And you just pick targets one at a time and go down the line. Kill one Chaos Warrior here, then you go to the next one, then you go to the next one. Make sure you're focusing your fire to make use of that uh, Shield Breaker ability. It's very, very effective and the best way to deal with Silver Shield Infantry. Especially since you don't have much AP in your own missile line, of, or uh, in your melee line of your own. Yeah, that's the basic gist of it. It's a pretty standard missile line style. It's kind of similar to how things like Cathay or Dwarves play. It's very intuitive, although it isn't the strongest. Dark Elves aren't the best at this style. You will much more often see that Scourge Rare style, as that's what they do very, very well. Though this is an acceptable style for them as well, in the right matchups. So yeah, I hope that helped you figure out a bit of how Dark Elves play in Domination. I hope you found that helpful. Again, if you found it helpful, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Any support is greatly appreciated. We've got a lot more educational comment coming in the next few weeks, so stay tuned for all that. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.